Hello and welcome back to Podcast in Praxis. I'm David, my pronouns are he and him. I'm James, my pronouns are they and them. I'm Jamie, my pronouns are he and him. I'm Alistair, my pronouns are also he and him. Um, yeah, okay, Rob's um, Rob's up Big Mountain again, so you will stuck with me doing the you notes. Might as well just uh, fucking live up there, quite frankly. I mean, you moved to Switzerland, you're basically signalling intent to do that. Yeah. But it's kind of like if, lived, if we lived up the big mountain full time, you wouldn't be able to send me like Swiss uh, Swiss pepper armies in the post. So you gotta understand, Rob has what's you know you know how like normal people whose you know bloodlines gets polluted by eldritch abominations, they move to Innsmouth and we go into the sea. Well, well, given that Rob already started in a swamp nation, he's got like the reverse of that. He's like gradually ascending the mountains toward the sky. So you know, I'm just saying his time of change is not yet. First, so you're, you're good for chocolates astronaut. for a while. She's going to get on a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> to Rob, this is a space elevator. And in strange aeons, even Rob may fly. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Um, let's get started with the first thing. So we talked about the prison system last week, the week before, at some point. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's all fucked. But good news, we are fixing it. And the way we're fixing it is by releasing uh, 1,700 prisoners early. Cool. With their, uh, yeah. We're going to release 5,500 total. Frankly, disgraceful collapse of law and order that they just get a slap on the wrist for violent offences. We saw a film about this recently. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. Well, did they... Oh, no. I'm getting what I asked for. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did they, like, are they, are they violent offenders being released? Uh, well, oh, you would think not. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, th- this is this is fucking grim. Uh, the current system, like we mentioned before, uh, lets you get early release. Well, you say early release, but you serve 50% of your sentence, and then you serve the rest of your sentence, not in a prison. How does that work? Uh, um, but these people are being released because they have served the whole 40% of the sentence. So, normal British state function. Mm-hmm. But it's worse because there are violent crimes in there. Uh, so there are ones that are being released who were convicted of ABH, etc. Things like that. Some of them are sex offenders and domestic abusers. Fuck's sake. Yeah, mm. so these were these were confirmed by the probation staff union. Apparently they have a union. Quote that I picked up from BBC. Members have shared examples where those with both domestic violence offences and sexual offences have been released because of this. When this has been challenged, union members have been directed to the prison and probation service, Guidance, which has stated that the early release is correct and cannot be challenged. Glad we cleared that up. Yep. So that's great. Very, very cool. Very good. Uh, the Ministry of Justice said that uh, eligibility for the scheme is based on the offence and not the offender, and that offenders may be released early from their sentence for a lesser offence when they have previously completed a sentence for a sexual or violent offence. So in other words, they might have been in before, done a sentence for that, yeah. and then got out, and then only got done on something else. Right. Because we so know that, what you know what Labour was yeah. saying, like what Labour was saying the other day about how this wouldn't be any violent people, technically correct. It wouldn't be people for, uh, locked up for well, violent offences. Well, assumedly, you know, if you would, if you would wish to hand it to them, would you like to hand it to them? No, I mean, no. like, unless, unless, you know what I mean, unless I blinked and missed it, and the like, British fucking like justice system does actually rehabilitate offenders now. Mm-hmm. Does it do that? I'm hearing that it doesn't. Ah, well. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, mm. I depend, I, to be totally honest, like, if someone had done an offence and they've done the time, I mean, you know, they're scum, right? But they've still done the time and we don't know. And if they were in for something like, I don't know, weed or some shit like that. But the problem with this is, I don't think we're actually locking people up for minor offences anymore, really. Like, not really. So the odds I, are pretty well, good. Well... <laughs> It, it depends, really. Um, custodial sentencing is really weird, and it really depends on what the current fucking annoyance is. For example, a zombie knife. Um, that might get you locked up now, but, like, just for having one. Yeah. 
So, yeah, uh, it's kind of fucked. The uh, Shadow DWP Secretary, Mel Stride, who I think is the front runner for the Tory leadership at the moment. Um, it's so weird to hear I, the word Shadow and think of the Tories, honestly. And that used to yeah. be Rachel Reeves and the rest of them. I know, all, all that is new is old, etc. Um, he said that apparently some domestic abuse victims have not been informed that their abuser has been released. It doesn't surprise me that Keir Starmer's government would release a bunch of people and be like, well, that's the end of that. Problem solved. Um, not going to let anyone else know what we've done, who's been released, pointing towards like no. helpful like services that might actually help them because there's no fun that that costs money, so there's no funding for any of that. Yeah. So No, you can't have money. Problem solved for the next four weeks. Mm. Uh the reason that these people haven't been informed that their abuser is released is potentially at least, because I don't know that this has definitely been working fully, down to a shit system. Wow. A shit system so in the UK? Co- mm, yeah. Uh, there's something called the Victim Contact Scheme. So the idea behind this is it gives victims information about their offender during the sentence. Um, you know, they get whatever information is deemed relevant to the case, etc., etc. It's all mm-hmm. dealt with on a case-by-case basis. But uh, Refuge, which is a domestic violence charity, says that it's insufficient as it only covers serious sexual or violent offences where the offender receives a custodial sentence of 12 months or more and it's voluntary to sign up to this. Voluntary for who? For the victim. All right, that's, you know what I mean, that's slightly less bad than it was about to sound. Mm, Well, yeah. Uh, It's still pretty fucking bad, though, that, Mm. like, it's, as an entirely voluntary system, there's no guarantee then that they're actually going to be given any information about it. And the fact that it's got such stringent fucking rules on it about the length of a sentence, etc. And obviously yeah. what type, because I can, without even fucking having a full list of what does and doesn't count, I can tell you right now that what doesn't count probably should count. Hmm. Yeah. Um... There's a bunch of conditions that come with these early releases. There's curfews, there's banned places and contacts, etc. Which are obviously all going to be organised and checked in on by probation officers. Did they hire any more probation officers for this? Did no, they fuck? I'm guessing. No, and they were already way overworked because of the amount of people that we've already been having to release early to try and make space to fit more people in. Because again... It's not that we don't give the sentences, it's just that we end up pushing more people out of the prisons to make space for the new ones that we need to put in because they must do the time in prison regardless of whatever the offence is. It's a very cool and normal system and we love it. Yeah. Hooray. Mm. Yeah. So like I said earlier, that's going to go up to five and a half thousand um, in the near future of the amount of people that have been released. Which, yeah, I'm sure it'll all take care of itself. No trouble, no worries. Everything will be absolutely fine. And the system think, will um, function. What do you think Labour are going to fucking do next, though? Because, like, obviously they can't stop locking people up for, like, minor and non-violent offences because that would upset the papers. But presumably just, like, fucking letting also everyone out of prison legal. is upsetting the papers. So when the papers start, like, fucking properly hounding them for this, what do you reckon their, their fix is going to be? Well... The the media response to this was um, not much that I could see, really, to be honest. Um, the, the the biggest deal that I could see being made was the BBC excitedly sending people out to sit outside prisons and watch as people walked out with plastic bags of personal belongings. Cool. Just normal behaviour. Mm. Yeah. Did they, send that, did they send that fucking boat counting cunt to do that? No, I was busy counting boats. Uh, I... Yeah, I, I presume he's not allowed to be fucking more than 50 metres away from a cliff. So, yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> but it's fine. Because the government's been up to other stuff. And we love to see when the government gets up to stuff. Cool. Mm-hmm. What yeah, have they been up to now, David? Um, What's the other thing oh, they've done? Other things, unfortunately. The, 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 the Labour Roundup does not stop. It was it was Labour Roundup all along. Uh, so Starmer went to the TUC this week to do okay. his big speech as the Labour leader to the TUC. 
He told them all about how it's always worth the hard work of working in partnership. And therefore, With. unions and bosses need to come together to increase profits. <laughs> oh, good, yeah, profits. And that, that's definitely, I've been crying out for someone to increase fucking profits. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, yeah. you know, how, you know how it is. You go, you go into a line of work. You spend lots of time training to become good at that job because, it, at the end of the day, the thing that you're most invested in when you start start working for a company is making sure that their profits are high. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, like, the first thing you do when you come in is say, "Can I have a look at the profit and loss, please?" Yeah, the wealth will just naturally trick it, trickle down. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. That's how that works. Mm-hmm. So, how did the room full of uh, union representatives take such a message? They applauded, obviously. I was going to say, applauding like so many seals. Yeah, yeah, it's the TUC. Of course, they fucking applauded. He also specifically singled out public sector pay. He said, "I do have it's to be too clear, damn high." <laughs> from a from a place of respect that this government will not risk its mandate for economic stability under any circumstances. And, with tough decisions on the horizon, pay will inevitably be shaped by that. I owe you that candour because, as was so painfully exposed by the last government, when you lose control of the economy... Oh, I'm sick of it's hearing about wor- the last fucking government and, the, and what they did the economy. It's like, <laughs> fuck off, man. Please. We were all there. When you lose control of the economy, it's working people who pay the price. So, so, so fuck you, you know, now, yeah, rather so than we, fuck you later. People have got to pay the price now so that we don't lose control of the economy again. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, you should be poor now rather than poor later, uh, as, as the, the kind of gist of that. And then after that, the speech was given a standing ovation by the Trades Union Congress, so... You think Very cool. If this cunt makes it five years between elections, do you think that in the next his next his campaign next time is still going to be all about how like the last government fucked shit? One hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah. The in in do five years in five else? years in five years they're going to be saying the Tories have fucked things so bad that's why we couldn't fix. It. I mean this. I mean it's what the fucking Tories did, right? Um, the Tories fucked everything yep. so bad it's going to take us two parliaments before anything good can happen and God forbid they get a second term where they will spend that whole term saying it's actually even worse than we thought yeah 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 um, actually on that one I don't have any notes on this one but I did I did note uh, another article in the BBC uh, national debt forecast to treble over next 50 years okay so yeah, presumably that means that everything's fucked forever. Uh, is okay, what but that's code I mean, for. the national debt isn't real, so. No, it's not, but they think it is. Well, I don't think they're real, so, so what now? Yeah, I drew, I drew oh, a scary so, graph, and now yeah. I'm going to tell everyone about it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty bad shit. But have you considered that if we cut the winter fuel payment, then that'll fix it? No, I hadn't considered that at all because that's patently fucking wrong. Because you're normal. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not some briefcase shagging dipshit on fucking social media who's just like cry wanking about how so many so many millionaires are claiming this like fucking meager benefit. Are they now? And also, mm. if they are, do I give a fuck? Just tax them. Just get it back by taxing them. Have you thought of that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a really easy and simple way to do it. Yeah, but um, then but then I wrote the word tax down on a piece of paper and that frightened me, so we can't do that. Well, if the, <laughs> if the problem is if the problem is you don't you think everyone earning over what what did they set the fucking thing at? Is it 40 grand? The pensioners? Oh, I can't fucking remember what but the actual whatever it is whether it's is. like whatever it is, you say say 40 grand, I haven't fucking I don't know what numbers are. But say it's 40 grand for like pensioners that then they can't have the fucking winter fuel allowance why not just leave the winter fuel allowance alone and just say everyone every old pensioners with 40 grand or more have to pay tax have to pay more tax problem solved there you go that's no that's that's childish economics jamie i will not be taking questions do you know, is the point of this government to turn us all into libertarians because we just fundamentally conclude that whenever the government does something is bad 
because that seems to be the theme of the past. No, because like everyone, you know everyone's what? just yelling, raise taxes, you cunts. Do you know what I mean? Which is very unlibertarian of them. Mm. I don't know, but there's there's a Paul Mason strand of thought in there somewhere about how that will actually defeat the next fascist government that might appeal. I don't know. Um, I don't want to hear that name there. anymore. Do you know what I mean? Surely yeah. he's not relevant now. You know what I mean? What did he fail like seven times to get a seat in that last election? He's just the least relevant man that's ever lived. To be fair, I think it was only six. Well, you know what I mean? I don't care. <laughs> no. No. No one does. Not even he really cares, I don't think, because, like, I mean, well, I wouldn't go on in my fucking daily life if that had happened to me. So, uh, that's uh, Winter Fuel Payment. Unfortunately, it is going to be stopped, and they had a, a, a big vote on it, and it was passed a 340... Vote. A big vote. 348 to 228 it was passed on. And uh, fucking, cool. the, like, a, bu- a bunch of, like, MPs who are still in the Labour Party, um, being all being cowards, apart from, was it Ian Lavery? Um, no, it was John Trickett. Oh, John Trickett, sorry. Uh, yeah, who voted, voted against it. Uh, but what really did make me fucking laugh was Rebecca Long, uh, Rebecca Long Bailey not voting against it, even though she's already had the whip withdrawn. <laughs> it's just, just risible. Yes. Yeah. Lovely fucking stuff. Um, just for some context on this, so a million pensioners are likely to actually fall into poverty with this being taken away. And although they've said, like, oh, it's fine, you can just sign up for pension tax credit, uh, this million will not be eligible for that. But I did hear a lovely interview on Radio 4 with, uh, I don't know, some Labour dickhead who suggested that it's okay, there's a discretionary fund Oh, is the by that they can apply. Yeah, they, they can just apply for the discretionary fund. Mm-hmm. Will they get that, do you yep. think, like, eh? They absolutely will if they apply for it, yeah. That mm. that one million yeah. cohort of pensioners will definitely get help from the £500,000 fund. Mm-hmm. I'm not shitting you, that's how much it is. They can get 50p each. Cool. Big help. Buy some coal with that. Mm. Also, the discretionary fund, you have to like succeed in your application, right? So no, the discretion of the just... fund... We just give benefits to anyone who shows up. I've, I've read that in the Daily Mail. <laughs> but in all seriousness, yeah. the discretion of a fund could be to give it to fucking no one. Like, um, you know. Oh, in my experience, so, it almost certainly will be. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So obviously, this this was this was tragic. Um, who was the tweet. who was the cunt that fucking said something like? Um, if people don't want to fucking t- if like a few millionaires don't want to turn the heating on over this, that's on them or something like that. Oh, oh fuck! I can't remember the cunt's name. What was that? An elected official? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a Labour MP, almost certainly a Labour and Co-op MP. Yeah. Every every um, day, every fucking day that goes I'm, past after after the last election, I feel better and better about the fact that I didn't do the stupidest thing I possibly could have done, which is to put an X in the fucking Labour box. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad we defeated evil forever. Obviously, that carries a price. Uh, a tweet from Lewis Goodall. I'm told that there were several Labour MPs in tears in the voting lobbies when voting for the winter fuel changes this afternoon. <laughs> Really thank taking you. that, we'll do it, but with a sad face uh-huh. thing to yeah. the absolute yeah. extremes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, really thank, thank... Tears? I, I'm picturing, I'm picturing a crowd of Matt Hancock on fucking breakfast TV there. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, uh, fucking Lewis, fucking stenographer Goodall for reporting that yep. important stuff to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. S- Say there, something sit... like <laughs> odd. <laughs> <laughs> how curious i mean even even peston uh it was like hold on a second lads uh about this yeah. <laughs> which, which, which is very funny um peston nearly realized something which is fucked up like if you're yeah, not nearly, pushing the nearly came... of normality against that <laughs> nearly how, coming how... to his own conclusion who could have thought <laughs> <laughs> how bad do things have to be before like the, you know what i mean like peston starts to notice the contradictions the never-ending tory <laughs> no. Um yeah, so 
the, Do you remember obviously, that fucking the... website someone made? The Never Ending Tory back in like fucking the coalition days? No. Um, it, it was like, and it was literally just like, you know, the fucking like dragon thing from Never Ending Story. It was that, but with David uh-huh. Cameron's face on it. And you just, as you moved the mouse around the screen, it left a trail and like music played while someone sang the Never Ending Tory. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, the the vote obviously like so three hundred and forty eight passed by last time I checked Labour had more than that, so there was obviously some people who didn't vote for it in the Labour Party, but the 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 whips managed to do this weird system of like some people being allowed to not vote for it and others not. So we had those not voting with good reason. So there was eight ministers there uh, in that category. So they were allowed to not vote and not support. That was fine. And then we had authorised principled they have a abstentions. Did fucking mom or something like why, why were they allowed not to vote? <laughs> um, I do have a couple of examples. Um, we also yeah. had, like, authorised principled abstentions. Authorised oh? ab- principled... Oh, fuck off. Yeah, poor, poor yeah. job. Poor John McDonald has an ear infection today, so I won't be able to take part in today's vote. <laughs> Is that what actually um, happened? There were unauthorised principled abstentions, and there were um, what the BBC termed as known unknowns. full rebels. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, full rebels, which was one, which was John Trickett, who was the only actual still Labour MP um, that voted against it. A bunch of them who did vote against it. And is he still a Labour technically MP? Uh, do you know what I don't know? I didn't care enough to go and check since Tuesday. Because if he is, then <sighs> Keith Keith's government's over. He's, he looks weak. And we all know they can't look weak. That's why we had to end winter fuel allowance. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Presumably he's been framed for stealing bottled water or something. But I'm sure um, that the famously normal British newspapers won't take any kind of issue with a government that freezes grandmas while releasing murderers from prison. Oh, Both we are. We two, are two things that just the the papers would just never fucking like decide to. Take we a are stance weeks against. away. We are weeks away from a second winter of discontent, like headlines at least. Yeah. Mm. Good. Good. They <laughs> fucking deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's obvious. Just all a fucking shit show. Um, let me see the examples that I had. I had a couple of examples. Um. Clive Lewis has apparently been making fucking excuses about why he couldn't be there. Uh, There's an incredible statement from Kim Johnson, which is a full six paragraphs, in which she she says, unfortunately, I'm undergoing prearranged dental surgery this week, so I am unable to attend Parliament. That means I'll be unable to participate in today's vote. And I've constantly requested the government reverses the decision. It would be very bad if it happened. Um, Had I been in Parliament today, I could not have voted with the government. Yeah, so basically the same result as not being in Parliament today, then. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, Actually, it straight out does not say that she would have voted against in any way, shape or form. Yeah, I I I wouldn't have abstained in absentia. I would have abstained in person. (laughs) Because (laughs) sometimes doing nothing in person is the thing that matters the most. (laughs) Yeah, uh, it's just... Utter fucking dog shit. I know. So imagine, many imagine avoiding the trolley problem because you've got a note from home. <laughs> yeah, mum says I'm not allowed to do the trolleys. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, next up on the uh, wonderful bunch of bullshit that's been happening today's big thing has been the NHS and why it's bad. <laughs> The NHS uh, is an abject failure. It consistently fails to turn a profit. Yeah. (laughs) Pretty much. Um, So there's been a report done, which was a nine-week-long review carried out by an independent peer and surgeon, Lord Dalsey, who has said that Airy apparently contributes uh, an extra 14,000 deaths a year because of the long waits. Yeah, I can probably see that. Okay, why are the long waits? Oh, oh, no, no. Um, 
don't ask that. I suppose if you do have to ask that, though, it's because generally the health of the nation is deteriorated. Why? Uh, have you considered the long-term mental health conditions that seem to have surged? What's caused them? Don't ask that. And... Uh, really, the, the, the most troubling point, though, that can be found here is that the rising levels of illness are risking economic prosperity. What economic prosperity? Exactly. That's because of all the ill people, Jamie. <laughs> oh, my God. Check well, me. Maybe, okay. maybe, right, the government should just send our, our brave fucking troops in and just shoot us all <laughs> and get it over with. <laughs> Replace I mean, us, just just fucking kill me and replace my fucking corpse with a, a fucking chat GPT powered like teddy bear <laughs> or something like that. I mean, like you joke, but they're gonna do like their, their long term goal is essentially to pretend that the you know long term effects of COVID aren't real and that that hasn't resulted in more disability, and they're gonna do what Canada's done in terms of like right to die, and just they'll introduce right to die, and they'll they'll say oh there'll be all these checks and balances and then essentially anyone who is surplus to society's requirements will be not so subtly kicked in the direction of just kill yourself, essentially. You, you, um, you, you, you are once again being a fool. Have you considered that it's nothing to do with COVID? Mm -hmm. It's the feckless fools who are too sad to work. That's the problem. If I get the right to die, am I allowed to carry on like I carry the death note? Is that how that works? <laughs> <laughs> Or does it have to be specific? Right to die right... brackets weaponized. Well, does it have to specifically be my right to die is what I'm asking. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Can I just like, you know, get the voucher for it and then use it on someone else? Nah, Jimmy, it's not a double O license, it's only just an O license. You need the second one punched as well. Yeah, it's like McDonald's Monopoly. Like unless you peel two of those vouchers, you're not getting the Yeah. Imagine how sick it would be, though, if you could just get one, like, get a voucher for right to die and then post it to someone you didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, re Reinventing, send sending someone drugs in the post to get them fucked over by the cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, obviously, th this is all terrible stuff and something needs to be done about it. Fucking <laughs> Godfather film where the guy freaks out because someone sent him a Dignitas gift card. <laughs> 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 oh, <fuck. laughs> yeah, uh, so in a speech off the back of this today, Starmer said that there will be no more money without reform of the NHS. Cool. So that's good. Cool. Yep. Um, he also used the words reform or die. Is that, is that going to be their slogan at the next election? I, I'm... Genuinely very happy that uh, Starmer has decided to start quoting from the rules of acquisition um, when talking <laughs> about the NHS. That's that, that bodes so well. Um, the thing is, yeah. though, like, are any of his fucking reforms like going to include maybe fucking off like all of the shit they do specifically to make the NHS worse? Oh, good lord! No, no, no I don't think so. No. Um. Apparently, the problem isn't the NHS model itself. It's just that it doesn't take advantage of the opportunities in front of it, whatever the that fuck that is. That is completely means. insane. It's not a fuck like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, has the NHS considered getting into crypto? <laughs> um, reform does not mean just putting more money in. Uh, we have to fix the plumbing before turning on the taps. Oh, fuck off, metaphor boy. I'm <laughs> sick of your shit. Yeah, unfortunately, oh. you've got a massive cuboid-shaped head stuck in your fucking pipes. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also something about how he doesn't want to fix everything from Whitehall, and it should draw on the talent of NHS staff. Which I want to presume fix means from Whitehall, he's going to get into some kind of like fucking aerial command craft from Captain Scarlet and just fly <laughs> above the nation. I, I I presume that that means that like just handing over more control to local trusts to make their own terrible fucking decisions about what parts of themselves to sell off. Yeah, yeah, it, um, it's great. It's great to establish this massive 
provider of healthcare in a country and then essentially break it up again uh several years to in or several decades after its foundation so that yeah. it's a less massive player on the market for for uh, getting cheaper drugs and other medical supplies so we can't we can't do the thing that we know that the NHS yeah. can do which is to use its size as a massive bargaining chip against pharmaceutical corporations because that's good that it can't do mm-hmm. that what is is even better is when it doesn't even pay any of its fucking workers anything. So you just end up with a completely overworked, understaffed bunch of people trying to give people who are, you know, desperate for health care, uh, subpar care. And uh, yeah, the, the callousness, that's just part of the system. Yeah. Sure hope someone got fired for that blunder. No, they got, <laughs> they got made a CEO, which for mm. some reason there are in the NHS. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there will be three big shifts for the NHS. It's two normally. Uh, the first, mm, the, the <laughs> first one is moving from an analog to a digital NHS. Oh yeah, we're going to replace every X-ray <laughs> machine with an app. Uh, is this just um, making it easier to give our records to the private sector? Is that is that the root of this one? I don't think that's even going to be close to the point of it. I think that's just going to be like one of these little added bonuses that they get. But mm. at the same time, They've already once done again, that, I think. Like well, before, they tried to stitch that up, didn't they? No, they tried to, but like new things or something like that. There was like one specific area was going to have that done because, um, of those two examples you're thinking of. There was one where there was a new thing that was being set up, and automatically your rights would be thingy the way to the, the data based on that. But it's all anonymous. Um, and then the other one was that there was an opt out that you had to put in. Uh-huh. Um, but the problem with that one was that I think the general quality of the data that people could get was dog shit because no one has ever been able to standardize NHS data. Like it's a shit show. You cannot like you cannot move from one trust area to another without something fucking up. And something being missing because there's so many different data systems yeah. in play in the one fucking organization. I'm sorry, our, our spreadsheet is laid out slightly differently. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be that. It'll be down to that, but it'll also be down to like having different contracts for software licenses in different fucking areas and stuff like that as well. So, like, entirely different software packages are used from one trust to another. The I whole mean, thing's how, fucking. How many stupid. different licenses can there be for Windows XP? <laughs> <laughs> Where it's so simple. Uh, the second shift is that they want to move imagine, healthcare. Imagine if like Russian hackers just dumped a load of malware on the NHS, and then when they get paid the ransom, like on the way out, they just fucking like you know what I mean, standardized all the computers and fixed them. Like, just upgraded <laughs> everything on their way out the door. Like the, fir- just the to make first, the first successful to do the malware in future. The first successful large government IT project. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we should let them yeah. have a crack at the internet time zone. <laughs> <laughs> The second shift is moving from hospitals to community services. Yeah, but are you gonna give, are you gonna give GPs any fucking money? No. Well, that's unfortunate. I guess, I guess you know you're just gonna have to put up with calling up every day at fucking eight a.m. and not getting an yeah, appointment. Um, but so, is GPs what they mean by community services? Is it because I like when when you said that, I, I imagine like you know what I mean. You've got to do like share the bingo hall with open heart surgery or something like that. (laughs) The national healthcare system will shift to a neighbourhood one, including improving access to GPs, quote, bringing back the family doctor and offering... Off! (laughs) And offering digital consultations. These are say one thing. Just say one fucking thing that means something. Just one. Just try it. (laughs) See if you like it. (laughs) Uh, this will deal with problems earlier, before people are sick from work and have to go to hospital. Oh, uh, d- fucking, do you know what it is? Like, Streeton's going to get hepped up on fucking chat GPT hype and try and do, like, fucking minority report, but for the flu, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the third shift will be a move from sickness to prevention. Wow, if only someone would have thought of this before. Mm. But also doing it for free. Yeah. Incredible. Doctors will start to wash their hands. Um, so he says that planning for 10 years means the government can make long-term investments in new technologies 
that will catch and prevent problems earlier, like children's mental health and children's dentistry. I don't know what this means. Like, this is such vague shit that it genuinely somehow means less than the other two. We've, we've generated another graph. This time we're calling it Vibes. And look at this. In the next five years, it's going to double. Yeah. Uh, it's worth probably noting there that the, obviously it's a 10-year plan. Um, presumably because the optics that, of five-year plans are bad. But A 10-year mm, plan like, like startlingly optimistic from these fucking idiots, isn't it? That's the point. That's so you can say, oh, well, we got there, but like... Speaking, uh, it can't speaking be of graphs... Speaking of graphs, I'm going to go look at that Starmer approval rating graph again. Always, always good for a laugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It can go lower.jpg. It can go lower.gif, really. <laughs> uh, always good. Always good to have a look. Yeah. It's a nice little pick-me-up, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, that's it. Also, by the way, there was something mentioned about would you really like to see a national... A, like social care system, but uh, don't ask any questions about that yet. That's the, <laughs> you, you fool. Don't do that. Anyway, that's all I've got for Labour Roundup at the moment. You will be glad to know. Now, I do have an article. Um, I'm going to give you a choice. We have an article and we have a game. So the article is um, you got what you fucking asked for or uh, we can have a video game quiz oh well the video game quiz obviously i think yeah i think just for novelty we have to go for video game quiz yeah a a shiny dangly thing oh what's that rather than Mm. some some absolute guff by fucking Raphael bear or something hi this is rob i'm disturbing your delightful in-ear entertainment to tell you that we have a patreon at patreon.com forward slash praxis cast you can go there for more episodes our discord bonus clips and much much more this is also me begging you for your money in exchange for goods and services thank you oh very well then let's all go to the lobby let's all go to the lobby let's all go to the lobby Get yourself some snacks. Bye. Have you noticed that video games are woke these days? Yes. I have, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, a, there's a handy website that, was that tells you. <laughs> yeah. is, that, is, that, is round one naming all the woke in all the games? Because we could be here a while. No, we, it'll uh, no be fine. I'll just go and find that spreadsheet I saw the other week. With, like, no, go and, yeah. go, and, go and find the spreadsheet. Do not do that. Oh, have I, have right. I like figured out what you're you're up to? Yes, you have. You have. <laughs> I am going to give oh, no. you the title of a game, and you are going to tell me whether or not it's woke. Okay. So, okay. This is the right sound of a spreadsheet being opened. You hear? It's not actually. <laughs> so someone's actually made an interactive quiz, um, nice. and I'm just playing it. Yeah, this is like this is third tier content you're getting here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Is it woke oh, or is it... So this woke? is like original Wait. Baldur's Gate. Uh, Baldur's Gate, original one. Uh, not, not woke. woke. I reckon, I reckon woke. that's woke because they like fucking... I don't, like they removed some fucking racism or something, I don't know. It is woke. The Siege of Dragonspear DLC contains overtly pro LGBTQ plus messaging. <laughs> sure. Okay. Features gay and trans characters that talk about their sexuality, including a trans NPC called Magena. Homosexual romance options. <laughs> is this uh is this is this like a new DLC that was created with the remake or was it part of the original? Because I genuinely I never thought it's I never the enhanced the edition. Through. It's the enhanced okay, edition, so it'll but be, was it was it added as part of the? In- what was I don't know. I'm assuming it's. A, I I can't. I've, I've clicked off it now. No, but the siege of something, wasn't it? Dragon spear or some shit. I don't know. Oh, I'll just Google it. No, that shit's new. So there you go. Yeah, oh, that okay. is new. Damn. Okay. See, okay. if you'd asked Next. us, do we think the new Baldur's Gate, you know, uh, Siege of Dragon Spear DLC yeah. is woke? Yes. Well, it was packaged yes. with a fucking game. Don't get on at me for the way this cunt formats his spreadsheets, all right? <laughs> Next up, Need for Speed Unbound. 
Woke or not woke? Woke. I'm going to say woke. I'm going to say not woke. Need for Speed Unbound is woke. Ah. Contains overtly pro LGBTQ plus imagery. Various pride flags available as mm-hmm. decals. <laughs> mm, that's exactly what I was thinking. Aliens Dark Descent. Woke or not woke? Oh, almost certain not woke. I'm going to say not woke for really stupid, tortured logic reasons. The aliens look okay. like dicks. That's the gayest thing imaginable. <laughs> I think it's going to be that, like, the original Aliens is, like, the, you know, strong woman done right and therefore Dark Descent is fine because it's in that tradition or some stupid bullshit like this. It is woke. Oh, of course. Contains overtly pro-DEI messaging. Many f- <laughs> Ma- wait, wait, wait. Many female authority figures, including the player character. Most oh, right. important okay. characters are female. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like the Christ. alien queen. I mean, I know, I, I do like, because when, when these types of people use the word work, they just use it to sort of, as this sort of blanket um, mm-hmm. way to disparage any anything that is happening in society as bad because woke woke bad but then like when they give you examples of things that they think are bad and their justifications as to why it is there are women present there are yeah. non-white yeah. The more, people the more present. they explain it the more they explain it the stupider it gets um call of duty warzone woke or not woke woke Absolutely woke, one hundred percent. One hundred percent woke because they added like a fo- they had a crossover with some gay shit. I- I'm, I'm, I guarantee you, it's like the game was fine when you were just shooting foreigners, but then they did like a promotional event where you can dress up like the fucking vault dweller from the Fallout TV show, and she was a woman. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's gonna be that or like the the Fortnite crossover, you know, or some other stupid bullshit. But yeah, it's a hundred percent that it's got women in it. The tactical bunny outfit, yeah, that was that's what what did it for yeah. me. Contains overtly pro LGBTQ plus images, multiple pride flag calling cards, and emblems. It is woke. Damn, in the dirt. Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut woke or not woke? Surely that's got to be woke, right? I'm gonna say not woke. I'm just, I'm, no, I'm thinking through. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. The director's cut specifically. Yes. Woke. <laughs> it is somewhat woke. <laughs> contains oh my god! Contains, they let a woman fly a helicopter. No, no. I promise you, the next sentence out of my mouth will fucking blue screen you. Contains subtly pro transhumanism content. <laughs> so it's very subtle with the transhumanism. Subtle, yeah. <laughs> What? Yeah, they thought they thought human revolution just sitting a guy on an office chair and spinning him around. <laughs> this game revolves around the idea of human augmentation and player growth is intrinsically tied to this principle. <laughs> yeah, why why does why does fucking Adam Jensen have to collect praxis kits and not like, you know what I mean, bibles in order to fucking progress through the game? Yeah, and, and, and again, not to come to a sense of the game, it's not all that good, but the one thing that Human Revolution actually talks about is how, oh, it looks like this augmentation is complicated and not all it's cracked up to be. So, like, I mean, come on. It's not, like, it's it, ideologically, it's as fucking tepid and neutral and absolutely not on his side, or not against it's, him, um, I should say. Like, is Human what? Revolution the first one of the reboots or mm-hmm. the second? Yes, it, it's the first one. Oh, right, okay. So not the one where fucking... Uh... Darth Maul calls Adam Jensen a bell end then. No. <laughs> right, Spanner in the works now with some weeb shit. Doki Doki Literature Club plus woke or not woke? It's woke. Uh, it's a hundred percent woke. Hundred percent woke. Okay. I'm I'm Alistair. convinced of this. Uh not woke. 
It is somewhat woke. <laughs> Right, okay, sorry. This guy is now bothering me in the other direction. How is it somewhat woke, given everything about it? It contains subtly pro-LGBTQ plus messaging. Subtly? And, yes, and a major character expresses romantic attraction to the player despite not knowing whether you are male or female, saying it doesn't matter either way. (laughs) It's not even like here's the thing the the pro LGBT stuff isn't even subtle. It just it's like it it right. This is the opposite. Problem. I don't think I don't, I don't understand think this guy how, knows what subtle means. I don't think he does either. Like like it's not a hell of a gay game, but it's like pro LGBT. There's no doubt about it. Oh, David, is is Disco Elysium in this list? I'm actually I'm not looking at their list, but I I, oh, I I'm gonna go find the list to find out. Because I think because um, I think I saw I think I saw Disco Elysium in this, and the answer was fucking incredible. Okay, <laughs> I will go find it. Um, and and don't please don't go find it. Um, in the meantime, Assassin's Creed Three Remastered. Uh, Rob, 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 where are you, a Rob? Woman. Come yeah, back, where, where Rob. is where is Rob when you need him? Up on a mountain. Um, you'll be, you'll be swan diving, diving off the edge. Finally done. We've finally done Assassin's Creed content. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> He'll have, it, maybe he's on his way. Maybe he's going to jump off the mountain into a hay bale just to get here. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. What do we reckon? Walk or not walk? Walk. Uh, mm-hmm. Woke, woke for some woke. contorted reason. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I've never it played can, it. It contains overtly pro DEI messaging, forced diversity that is inaccurate for the time period. Diversity. Oh, oh right. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Wait, in Assassin's Accur- Creed Three. Which one? Which one is in Assassin's Creed Three? What's the setting? I can't. I don't know. It's the American Revolution one, isn't it? <laughs> Our colonial America, it- seventh. Yeah, mid mid eighteenth century. Right. It, it, sorry. Uh, uh, um, how? What? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, right. The joke is, even if it was like Florence, Italy, like Assassin's Creed 2 or wherever it was, um, it would still not be inappropriate for the time period. But uh, really, American Revolution has for, it's got too much racial diversity? What? <laughs> mm, okay. Um, God of War Ragnarok. Walk, hundred percent walk. So yeah. walk, it's painful. Oh yeah, Kratos is gay now because he has emotions. It is, it is walk. It contains overtly pro DEI messaging. The NPC Angerboda, uh, probably mispronounced that, but fuck them, they're yeah. dead gods. Um, has been race swapped. No one in Norse mythology <laughs> is described as having features consistent with sub-Saharan Africans. Kratos is Greek, motherfucker! <laughs> Kratos is not white! Like, he's only pale because of, like, contrived bullshit that they put together in the original with the, ash of his, the ashes of his dead family. He is a fucking, like, Spartan, and, like, you know, it's talked about as a point about, like, you know, like, they've got a fucking Greek, like, m- manufactured god comes to the setting and starts murdering Norse gods, and you're like, oh, well, that was fine in the first one but as soon as they introduce a black character like what the fuck do you know why they hate they, they, they genuinely they hate her for two reasons number one is that she's black and number two is that she's the love interest for kratos's son and she uses like colored paints which is kind of gay um as her like uh you know like uh magical combat kind of related thing and they're just like, well, he can't be he can't be into someone who's like some kind of queer coded black person. Like we can't have that at all. Just so fucking stupid. And I, you know the joke is, I didn't particularly like the character. I thought it was badly written. But these guys like fucking woods for trees. I swear to God. Um, army men, woke or not woke? Well, just army men in general, or just the, the, army the green men. Plastic one from back in the day, right? Walk. I'm assuming so. It's walk. I remember that game. It's walk. <laughs> you remember oh. it? <laughs> yeah, I played it. I don't know what you remember from that game, but it is not walk. Not contains walk. That's interesting. No walk content whatsoever. 
I mean, I just presumed it was woke because of all the other, like, child's toys that appear. Like, so the twist to Army Men is it's like you're playing what seems to be a real army game and the final levels start scattering around, like, obvious children's toys. And, oh no, like, it turns out that you're actually, you know, war is hell and you're like a toy, essentially. But some of the toys scattered around are girls' toys, along with, like, the green army men. So I presumed that was, like, you know, nonconformist gender evidence and therefore it must be woke. No, apparently also, not. Also, not, not, not according to the expert a... streams. Yeah, uh, okay, sure. Defer to the bootmaker and all that. <laughs> uh, Valheim. Uh, oh, that's got to be that, woke. Gotta be woke. Walk, walk because of the female player. Or is characters. it not woke because I hate it? <laughs> it is not woke, not because you hate it, but just because it contains no woke content. Command and That's Conquer, true, actually, Red Alert. I've played that and I'm gay as hell, so. <laughs> <laughs> Command and Conquer, Red Alert, Counter Strike, and The Aftermath. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, oh, fuck oh. is The Aftermath? Oh, uh, it's it's, the, it's the second um, expansion pack. It's got more missions and. Yeah, it's the Aftermath was the green expansion oh, pack. Oh, right, uh, right. Counter Strike okay, was so, one yeah, that had the ants. I, I, thought you, I thought he was just randomly switching to doing three games at once there when he mentioned Counter Strike. <laughs> yeah, I, for, I forgot. Okay, yeah, I forgot. Counter Strike. Yeah. <laughs> Counter Strike was um, the one where if you held the shift key and clicked the speaker, you got the secret ant campaign, which was the best yeah. thing ever. Uh, is, um, is, no, is, no, you see, Red Alert is woke because they kill Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Tanya's uh, a woman. I... F- uh, I think it's woke because of something in Aftermath. Let's go, David. It is not woke. You are free and safe to play that game. Oh, right. Okay. Sim City 4 Deluxe Edition. Woke. Woke. Not even a question. 100%. Absolutely. They, they let you do gender variants. It's woke. It's not woke. What? Shit! What? What? Fuck! What? <laughs> Sorry. Right. You can literally you you could change your body type, your voice type, choose your no, no, pronouns no. for no, whole. No. No. Sorry. Sorry. No. Sim City Four. Sim City. Oh, I thought you said the Sims Four. No. Sim City Four. We haven't had the Sims yet, and that's not come up. Hang Warframe. On. Sims. It, wait. 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 Hold on. Back up a second. Isn't uh-huh. Sim City Four the one that integrated with the Sims? No. No. Okay. Never mind. It, no. At least if it did, then. I never. I think it integrated with. I think it integrated with like Sim. Uh, what is it? Aircraft or whatever. Pull the names from your Sim save Copter. files or some shit. Yeah, Sim Copter or something. Oh uh, yeah, that sounds more likely. Yeah. Anyway, Warframe woke or not woke? It's woke. Yeah, woke. I'm gonna say it not woke. woke. It's, it's, oh damn. No, it's woke. Yep, Pride flags once again, mm-hmm. ruining a good game. Oh, you hate to see it. Leisure Suit Larry 2, looking for love brackets in several wrong places. Oh, I, do you know what it is? <laughs> if, the, if this is woke, I'm going to laugh my crabs off for a week. Please, God, right, let's I, woke. I think it's woke because he's picked Leisure Suit, Leisure, Leisure Suit Larry 2, which is the one where they tamped down on some of the misogyny, and uh, that got a lot of kickback at the time, so I think it's woke for that reason. I'm going to say it is. not... Not woke. You're going to say not woke? It is somewhat woke. Ah! Yeah, there we I go. I keep forgetting that that's an option. <laughs> Here we go. It contains is it because they subtly... Down on... No, 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 it, no, it is absolutely no. No, it does not. It contains subtly pro-LGBTQ plus messaging. There is forced cross-dressing for a brief <laughs> period during the story. This is presented in a humorous setting. Which, which presumably is what takes it down from woke to somewhat woke. Holy shit, is Monty Python woke? <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhat. John Cleese is going to be fucking livid. Final Fantasy VII. Oh, woke that's woke as hell. Reason. That's fucking woke the as hell. original of a remake. Either. It, just uh, the original. Your eco uh, terrorist has got to be woke. Because it's about environmentalism, yeah. No, I, you see, I think... Probably not, you know, for the eco-terrorism, because I don't think this guy's like fucking, you know what I mean? I don't think this guy even understands what themes are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, think, yeah I, I would revise be... my answer, not what. But, but do you think it's... Final Fantasy VII does include a black person, and that's when it's woke. Oh, so... shit. Do you think it's... 
do you think it's going to be not woke because you know Tifa's got big norks? Is is that going to be what it comes down to for him? Oh, because it's the original. You mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is somewhat woke. Oh fuck off! <laughs> Some, <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Somewhat Planet is dying. such a good addition to this. I really fucking love somewhat woke. <laughs> Uh, contains subtly pro LGBTQ plus messaging. Contains subtly pro climate action messaging. Subtly, <laughs> subtly. <laughs> the early game had you fucking bombing a reactor. <laughs> Forced cross dressing. Oh yeah, yeah. You start the game working for an eco terrorism group. <laughs> Somewhat woke. <laughs> Yeah, bombing an oil pipeline, somewhat woke. Being gay, definitely woke. Being black, extremely is, woke. Is it is is the definition of somewhat woke for him that yeah, it's got woke shit in it, but I kind of liked it. Is that is that what it actually is? <laughs> Looking at the pattern we've had so far, are you are you disparaging the fucking integrity of woke detector? <laughs> yes. <laughs> As well, you should. South Park, the fractured butthole. Oh, I mean walk. It pains me to say walk, but walk. It's walk because Obsidian did it, and therefore one of their fucking like head <laughs> guys has been on a communist podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it is walk. Um, option for the player character to be other instead of male or female. If other is selected, the player will be told there is nothing wrong with being non-binary. I have I have found the woke contact detectors list, and I've looked up Disco Elysium. Okay, yeah, like, put as it were fucking misery. What is Disco Elysium? <laughs> no, you have to guess. Oh, it's woke. Yeah, somewhat woke because it lets you play a fascist. <laughs> It says not recommended, so presumably that means <laughs> <laughs> just didn't get it in brackets. Yeah, well, um, I'm just gonna read this out. Read, uh, read out the little little blurb. Contains overtly overtly pro LGBTQ plus messaging. Features multiple LGBTQ plus characters, including the player character. Heavy social commentary regarding communism. Whether pro or anti <laughs> is unclear. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me again, who did the developers thank on the stage when they got awards for this game? Can anyone remember? (laughs) Nah, it's the memory hold, probably doesn't matter. (laughs) Fucking beautiful. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one last one actually. I've I've got one last good one. Mm -hmm. Battlefield five. Walk. Yeah, not woke. woke. No, somewhat woke. Somewhat it, woke. It, it, no, it is fully woke. Oh. Full blown woke. Contains overtly pro DEI messaging. Historically inaccurate, strong female soldiers. <laughs> S- some are disabled. <laughs> POC soldiers on both sides. <laughs> Oh, it's very annoying how much these guys like. I mean, I understand, you know, they're doing the whole history is whatever we want it to fucking be, but you know, World War Two was famous for having, you know, I mean, it's kind of in the name, in it, like World War, kind of hit mm. on all parts of the world, all sorts of people got involved in it, like, yeah, or World War One, even. Sorry, still, same thing applies. Well, yeah, well, yeah. That, Battlefield Five, I now, the think. The first W stands for white. <laughs> <laughs> um, was Battlefield Five the World War One? Yeah, I was thinking it was World War One, but it still applies. Like, you know, you had the British Empire involved in that, so there you go. Um, no, Battlefield Five was World War Two. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, then it doubly applies. Back to ba- when they went back to World War One, they called it Battlefield One, even though it was like the that's right. game or something. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, that was annoying. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, that'll that'll do it for the game. I think we've we've wrung all the content we can out of that. I want to know if Horror School skiing is walk. <laughs> um, yeah, he's gay. So yeah. 
It doesn't say. I do not have anything on Horace goes skiing, unfortunately. Oh, well. We'll just have to remain a mystery, I guess. Yeah. Although I am pleased to report that Leisure Suit Larry 1 is not woke. Yep, there you go. Although most of the Leisure Suit Larry games are woke. Yeah. Yeah. You hate to see I it. Be, I, like, I haven't even played them. I've just watched video essays on it by some fucking YouTuber talking about old games and how, like, you know, what passed as okay back in the day. And it was really funny hearing about the fucking reaction to Leisure Suit Larry and how the developers, like, both lent into it and also tried to take some of it on board and changed what it was. So, yeah. It's amazing the kind of weird shit that ends up being useful on this podcast. Isn't it just? Okay, cool. Uh, we have bonus episodes available. Uh, they will be on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash praxiscast. You can also uh, check out the streams. They will be every couple of Thursdays. Um, will we be streaming this week? No, we won't. Will we be streaming the following week? Maybe. Um, yeah, twitch.tv forward slash praxiscast. And merch also available at praxiscast.tml.com. Do we have anything else? Is there anything else going on? No. Nope. Okay, goodbye. Bye. See ya. Bye.